Okay, 2.1, writing and graphing inequalities. Um, just a quick review about inequalities. First, everyone should be hopefully familiar with the symbols. We have the less than symbol, and we have the greater than symbol, and we have the less than or equal to symbol, and we have the greater than or equal to symbol. Um, just a quick way to remember those, if you think of a number line, think of the positive end and the negative end. The greater than symbol is always on the positive end. Um, I guess the other way to think about it is if you have a less than symbol, it starts, kind of looks like an L, less than, okay? Uh, uh, just remember, less than symbol points to the left, greater than points to the right, and then your or equal to piece is the little equal to piece at the end, okay, or underneath there. The, I guess the other inequality symbol is the not equal to. Looks like that, okay. And so some things to remember. First, if you have um, some statements for inequalities, x is greater than 3, uh, that greater than, once again, Greater than looks like that. Okay, and so if we write that, x is greater than 3, just kind of like it says there, and take it step by step, we end up with this inequality. The graph of that inequality, if you have a number line, what I like to tell students to do is just put two numbers on there, 0 and then the number. I guess unless your actual value is 0. Um, if it said like x is greater than 0, then you'd have to pick another number other than 0. But you know, if we have three, we're going to put zero and three. Um, the the symbols, the inequality symbols that do not have the equal to piece under it, um, to show that that will not be a solution, we use what's called an open circle. Okay, and so we have an open circle there because three cannot satisfy this. It means it cannot be part of our solution set. So, for instance, if I were to put three in here, three is not greater than three. That's not a true statement, therefore, 3 cannot be in included in the solution set. The other number I have on my number line is 0. So I'm going to try 0. If I put 0 in for x, substitute that in, 0 is greater than 3. That also is a false statement. That means all of my solutions lie to the other side of the line, uh, the other side of the 3, okay? Uh, the side that 0 is not on. So, for instance, if I wanted to test 4, 4 is greater than 3. That is a true statement. And 4 actually happens to be over here somewhere. Okay, so we're shading over our solutions. We have a set of solutions. Anything bigger than 3 is a solution, and that's what the shading implies over on the right-hand side. The other thing to note is that notice your inequality symbol. The greater than symbol points to the right, so it's x is greater than 3. As long as your variable is on the left and we start reading it from left to right, the symbol will tell you which way to shade. So this symbol is pointing to the right, so we shade to the right. That works as long as x is on the right or your variable is on the right. Let's try another one. So x is less than 3. I'm going to use a different color for this one here. Okay, And so once again, x less than now looks like that looks like an l or points to the left left for less um, and then we end up with this inequality and then in terms of our our number line we're going to put zero again we're going to put our three and it's not included three won't make this a solution if i were to plug in three three is not less than three that is a false statement that's what that slash means. Um, if I try 0, is 0 less than 3? That is a true statement. Okay, I plug 0 in. I substitute 0 in. That's true. That means I need to shade over 0. That means any number to the left of 3 will be a solution. Now, if I were to test 4 over here, 4 is not less than 3. That is false, therefore, that one um, won't be shaded over, and 4 is over here. Okay. And notice the arrow is pointing to the left, and my shading was to the left because my variable started out on that side. All right, let's try another one here, and we'll switch colors again, and 
Now, x is greater than or equal to 3. And that looks like this symbol, uh, greater than or equal to. And so now we have something new. You know, we had in the past, if I just put my 0 and 3 again, we had just the greater than or less than. However, now if we plug 3 in, 3 is greater than or equal to. So 3 is equal to 3. Therefore, this is true, meaning 3 is a solution, which means I have to close that circle now. So if it has an equal to piece, we close the circle up. It means it is a solution. And then any number bigger than 3, or it points to the right, so we shade to the right. If we were to test 0, remember, you want to test it. 0 is not greater than or equal to 3. Therefore, we cannot shade over 0. We have to shade away from 0. Okay? X is less than or equal to 3. All right, less than or equal to. Looks like this. Okay? And if I were to test 0, 0 is less than or equal to 3. That is true. So if I'm graphing this one, I want to again, I'm going to put the 0 there. I am going to put 3. It's a solid dot, a solid circle, because 3 is a solution. 3 is equal to 3, and I shade to the left. I have to shade over 0. So that means any solution to the left of 3 will work there. All right. Let's try some other. Writing a sentence as an inequality. 8 is greater than or equal to 4 times a number. Okay, so we want to go ahead and write, and I'm just going to write it like I read it. So 8 is greater than or equal to 4 times a number n. It would look just like that. So if I condense that a bit, 8 is greater than or equal to 4n. Now I just solve an inequality to solve for n. I just solve it just like I would an equation. I'm gonna, they're multiplying by 4, so I'll divide both sides by 4. So I get n and 2. So now if I read it from left to right, 2 is greater than or equal to n. Now I always like to put my variable on the left. So I'm going to rewrite this now. I'm going to put the n over here and the 2 here. And notice I'm pointing at the n or I'm opening towards the 2. When I rewrite this, I've got to switch that sign so it's pointing at the n or opening towards the 2. And there we've got it. And when you box it, make sure you don't get you make sure you can still see their equal to piece. And then we graph it. All right, so we've got a number line. We've got 0. We have 2. We've got the equal to piece, so solid circle. And 0 is less than or equal to 2. Therefore, I have to shade over 0. Or it's pointing to the left, so I shade to the left. All right, we'll try another one here. I'm going to switch colors again. So we'll go 1 fourth of a number x is less than 12. OK. And so if I'm solving that, I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by the common denominator, which is 4. All right. And actually, 4 quarters, or 4 times 1 fourth, is 1. This 4 cancels that. Think of it in terms of fractions. So I get x is less than. 12 times 4 is 48, okay? X is less than 48. So, drawing my number line here. Once again, I'm just going to put 0, and I'm going to put 48. Now, some teachers may have you write all the numbers in between. I just 0 and 48, put it in the correct spot, and we're good. It's not, we don't have the or equal to piece, so it's open circle, and it points to the left, so we shade to the left. Or if you put 0 in, 0 is less than 48, so that's a true statement. All right, let's go ahead and try the next one. 3 is less than or equal to the difference, well, we haven't seen that, the difference of a number y and 7. Now, anytime they give you an operation prior to what you're taking the difference of here, so the difference means subtraction, answer to a subtraction, that is generally going to replace the word and in the next expression there. So the word and becomes minus. So y minus 7. So 3 is less than or equal to y minus 7. Okay, to solve, add 7 to both sides. OK, 
get y here and we get 10 here and I like to rewrite it once again so I'm going to rewrite that y 10 notice it's pointing at the 10 the arrow is so there we got it there's our solution our graph 0 10 closed circle because we have that or equal to piece on it and 0 is not greater than 10 therefore I shade away from 0 or since my variables on the left the arrow points in the direction I want to shade okay let's go ahead and try another one here the sum of a number sum remember sum is add of a number they're giving us that operation ahead of the expression so it's going to replace the word and so sum is going to go right there the sum of a number z and 15 is more than that means it's greater than 9 so rewrite it z plus 15 is greater than 9 we'll go ahead and solve that subtract 15 on both sides z is greater than negative 6. Okay, and graphing it, we get 0. We have negative 6 now. Open circle because there's no equal to, and 0 is greater than negative 6, so we've got to shade over 0. And we've got to shade past 0. Don't just shade to 0. Shade past it. Okay, because 10 is greater than negative 6 as well, so we've got to keep shading if I had 10 out here. All right. Let's go ahead and try to write some inequalities given a graph. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to use x on these. So I'm going to write x, and it's at negative 7. Okay, here's x, and once again, it's at negative 7. Here is x, and this one's at negative 2, and over here we have x, and this one's at negative 2. Now I just have to put the inequality symbols in. So I have a solid, and it's pointing to the right. I'm shading all the numbers bigger than negative 7, so it's greater than or equal to negative 7. That means these numbers over here could represent x. Anything on the right, anything over there could represent x. 1 could, 2 could, 100 could, because they're all greater than negative 7. Okay, this one is shading to the left, so they're all the numbers smaller than negative 2. Okay, and it's not equal to, so we don't have their equal to piece. x is less than negative 2, so our x's are over here this time. Come back to our negative 7. This is the same thing. However, we don't have the or equal to piece. It cannot include negative 7. Like here, negative 7 is greater than or equal to. It's equal to negative 7. So here, it can't work because there's no it, number, negative 7 isn't shaded. And this one, we have the or equal to. It's all the things smaller than negative 2, so it's less than or equal to. All right. And... Let's see if the value is a solution to the inequality. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to just um, plug some value. I'm going to plug 3 in. So if I put 3 in, so I want to see since x equals 3. So if I pick a value for x, for instance 3, and I put it in, does it make this a true statement? That's the question. Okay, so 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 8, is that greater than, there's a question mark there, 32. Well, that's 20. Is 20 greater than 32? And the answer is no. Okay. Is, he, is, is 3 a solution? No. Is 4 a solution for that matter? 4 times 4 is 16 plus 8. Well, that's 24. No. Okay. We'd have to keep trying until, until we um, get past 8. Like 4 times 8 is 32. 32 plus 8 yeah, that works. That's 40. Okay, 8 would be a solution. Okay, but the value they're giving us for x doesn't work. So we tested it. The answer is no. All right, let's try another one here. Is 2 a solution? Well, plug it in again. We'll substitute it in. It's actually the math term. All right, we get 12 minus 9. Is that greater than 3? We get 3 is greater than 3. This is 3 greater than 3? The Actually, the answer is no. So that doesn't work either. Well, this one could, this was really close to working. Let's pretend we would have had 6x minus 9 is greater than or equal to 3. 
and find out if x equals 2 is a solution. So a different problem. Well, in this case, if we did it, 6 times 2 minus 9, is that greater than or equal to 3? Well, that's 12 minus 9. And we get 3 is greater than or equal to 3. This works because of the equal to piece. Okay, this one doesn't work because it doesn't have the equal to piece. So that's ways to check. One last little bit here is called set builder notation. Okay, this is another way of saying x is greater than or equal to 4. So, and I think I wrote it out here, yeah. This is read as the set of all numbers, set of all numbers. So these little brackets right here, okay, these little brackets mean the set of all numbers. Okay, and then let me switch colors here. The set of all numbers x, obviously there such that, now, one thing I like to tell students is like when we see such that, here this such that is actually just this little line right there, such that, and then we have that last piece, and let's just uh, maybe use the highlighter for that, x is greater than or equal to 4, and obviously that is just that piece right there, okay, so that's another way of saying it's another way of just saying x is greater than or equal to 4. Okay? It's read as the set of all numbers x such that x is greater than or equal to 4. And for those of you who have, you're like, man, the brackets, they're tough. Well, just remember it's just a parenthesis, a less than, and a parenthesis. And then a parenthesis, a greater than, and a parenthesis. Okay? You think of it like as a little face, kind of weird looking. Woohoo! All right, but I guess we don't need all the little face stuff. Kind of, kind of weird. There we go. All right, that's it. Good luck. Woohoo!